All right, this is um, five things that filmmakers should invest in early on that isn't cameras or lenses. As a bit of a preface to all these different categories, I want to mention the saying, buy nice or buy twice, because that saying could not be any more true as when it comes to camera gear. I think it's important to remember that just because you can afford something and you could probably go out there and pick it up today, doesn't mean that that's a great decision and that you necessarily should make that choice. Now this part isn't one of my suggestions, but maybe it could act as a bit of a bonus one, but I just wanted to show you what I mean by buy nice or buy twice. So when I started out, I bought the G Master 24 to 70. And I know lots of people who have bought the Sigma 24-70 and it's a pretty solid lens, it's got good image quality and it saves a fair bit of money from the G Master but I know so many people that after six months they've got dust all inside their weather sealed lens and they've ended up selling that, taking your loss on their equipment and then going out and buying the G Master and actually spending more money. So there are times when buying the correct gear, buying the better quality gear actually saves you money in the long run. So that's kind of the motive with this video. I want to educate you on some things that are really worthwhile of your money and things that are worthwhile spending extra to get the best quality in return. I don't want to push an agenda of you need to buy and you need to always have the latest gear, but there are some things that's really worth putting the extra money into. So you still need to, you know, use your own discernment and make sure you are making the wise choices for you and your business. But sometimes quality is the best way to go. And when I say sometimes quality is the best way to go, I mean, it's always the best way to go. Anyway, number one, tripods. Sounds pretty boring, right? If you find yourself in the video space and you think you're gonna continue down this video path, then I highly recommend investing in a good quality set of sticks. Now I say buy nice or buy twice, and this is a great example of that. About three or four years ago, I wanted to get a good solid set of sticks, and I settled on the Satchel Flowtech 75. Best choice I think I've made in my time in the industry. These things are absolutely fantastic. Now they sent me back about $2,600 for the legs only. I really wanted to buy the legs and the Activate head, but I just couldn't afford that package. So what I did, I bought the legs and I settled on getting a Manfrotto Nitro Tech 608. I watched a bunch of reviews, I read a bunch of reviews, and it all seemed pretty good. Now this is a $1,200 Australian head, so it's by no means absolute garbage, you know, cheap trash sort of stuff. However, after using this head for the last three years, now my fourth unit via warranty. So I can tell you that even though it's still expensive and it's not, I will say cheap, <laughs> buy nice or buy twice. Because if I was buying this and it wasn't covered under warranty, I'd be four heads later down the road. And now every time I go and use a friend's Activate, <laughs> every time I regret not buying it. And the thing that makes this even worse is one day I'm gonna sell this head and I'll get the Activate. However, when I could have bought this three or four years ago as a package, you could have got the sticks and the head for about five grand Australian dollars. Now that package is closer to eight grand. So by me not buying nice at the start, I'm gonna be so much more out of pocket. Good set of cinema sticks and cinema heads are super important in the industry because when you're getting further down the video road, the cameras get bigger, the rigging gets bigger, the map boxes, the lenses, the batteries, everything becomes heavier. And if you want sturdy shots, you just want safety to set it there and make sure it's not gonna tumble over. Having good quality gear and good quality legs is absolutely paramount. At the end of the day, it's just an extra insurance policy, something to make sure your gear doesn't go tumbling to the ground. Anyway, you get the point. Number two, grip gear. Any sort of clamps, stands, rollers, anything like that, skip the cheap stuff and go straight to the quality gear. I've flirted with some cheaper grip products like Neuro in the past, and it's just a really dangerous game to play. So I made the choice, and now I've moved over to all my C stands are the Master Series from Kubo, and I've got some of their high roller stands as well. And if I ever need help on set, Kim normally comes along, and he's got a ton of Kubo Master C stands as well. So the rock solid, the super sturdy, and both Kim and I both use the Turtle Bay system, which means they're super quick to deploy and uh, pack away. So if you're thinking, all right, Jed, it's all well and good to tell me to go and buy some good C stands, but the Kubo range is four to five hundred dollars for a single stand, and I just can't afford that. Why would I do it? Think about it this way. So if I have my Neon Light Forza 720B, that video head is about five kilograms. And if that's suspended up in the air, and if I'm using a cheap bit of gear and that falls down, breaks off, and it hits someone in the head, that could be fatal. And that's gonna cost you a whole lot more than just buying a new light and some new C stands. Good gear isn't just to hang your gear up or protect your gear. It's also there to protect everyone on set and make sure everyone's staying safe. You wouldn't put a $20,000 camera on a $400 tripod and you wouldn't put regular fuel in a Ferrari. So don't take the risk and put expensive lights on cheap stands. You wanna keep your gear safe, you wanna keep people safe. Now number three is a bit of an investment in yourself. 
As a filmmaker progressing up the ranks, your gear is only going to get heavier and you're only going to get older. And in this industry, your back's health is one of the most important assets you can have. And my back is absolutely cooked. Over the last few years, I've had to have some small procedures on my back and it's not in a good way. But what I did a few years ago to try and minimize this and try and help get things a little bit healthier, if you will, was I bought an Easy Rig Mini Max with the uh, Stabil Arm. What it does is it helps disperse all the weight and all the tension your back is taking across the whole back and not just pinpointing it to one spot. It's essentially a camera aid that works as a back brace to keep you working in this industry as long as possible. But on top of all that, it stabilizes your camera footage in a real nice and organic way. These are some of the things you should be looking forward to keep you healthy, keep you in the industry, to keep you be able to chase the dogs or run around with your kids one day. That's the things that I didn't think about when I was younger. My back has a lot of rehab to go and over the last two and a half years, I've spent about $5,000 on small procedures, physios, sport doctors, rehab, and that's not including any sort of gym membership or swimming membership to try and strengthen the back. So I've got a lot of work to do and, and who knows, if I bought the easy rig sooner, maybe my back's health would be better and I'd be a few thousand dollars better off. At the end of the day, your health is your wealth and your back health in this industry is pretty much number one. So look after yourself. Anyway, the next thing is storage and there is nothing sexy about storage. <laughs> It's probably one of the hardest things to actually bring yourself to spend the money on. But as cameras resolutions keep getting bigger and frame rates keep getting faster, we require more data to be able to be captured onto a card in a smaller amount of time. When you're buying the faster, higher quality cards, these tend to last longer, be way more reliable in the field and also onload and offload quicker as well. But it's not just about in-camera media. It's about what your post-production workflow is as well. For me personally, the way I do my out in the field backups as well as my post-production at home, I use the Samsung T7 Shield SSDs. I found these to be super reliable and never have a problem with them. They're IP67 water resistant and dust resistant and I think they're in two meter shot proof as well. So for me, that's exactly what I need in the field when I'm trying to do all my transfers because they're super fast and they get the job done really well. I see too many people buying hard drives, slow spinning disks that are fragile in the field, but also just take forever to write and you can't edit off them, not quickly anyway. Good quality SSDs are absolutely crucial for in the field backup and editing from to make sure you're not filling up your computer space unnecessarily. But speaking of hard drives, this is something that I personally need to get and I am <laughs> I'm looking forward to, I'm giving myself advice right now. If you're like me, you run a small production company and maybe you do YouTube stuff as well, a NAS. You need to get a NAS. I need to get a NAS. If there's any NAS companies watching this and you want to <laughs> collaborate, let me know. <laughs> and the NAS system that I've been looking at buying is going to send me back about 10,000 Australian dollars. And it sucks. I do not want to spend the money. I'm not going to lie to you, but it is a bit of a requirement and almost like you have the responsibility to your clients that if you're going to charge them the prices you charge, you need to store their data correctly. My current system of having multiple backups on different drives and stuff is just it's not what I want to do long term. I want to have things backed up properly and just know things are secure and that I can access it from the cloud if I need to. This might not apply to some of you if you're not looking to run a production company, you just want to operate on behalf of other people or work at an agency or something like that. But if you are running a solo thing, then this is a, a pretty important thing. So if you're not going to get a NAS, you probably need to at least look into getting a RAID system. It's just peace of mind knowing things are backed up in multiple places. Like I said, there's nothing sexy about storage, but um, safety and redundancy, well, that's pretty hot. Cancel. So hot right now. Cancel. Finally, we'll do this as like a little bonus tip because I'm probably going to make another video on it one day, but stop rigging out your mirrorless cameras. If you buy an A7S III and you buy yourself rails, base plate, you get a map box, you get a top handle, cage, V-mount plate, V-mounts, monitor, all the rest. You look at what you paid and you could have just bought an FX6, which has 90% of that built in. That's all I'm going to say. I see too many people doing it and I give them the same advice all the time. And everyone goes, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> and you know what? I did it. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, it's the money I spent could have bought me an FX6 way sooner and I would have been way happy with the outcome of that money instead of having a bunch of parts that I really don't use just sitting in a drawer. So I hope you don't take this video as a spend all your money, buy everything that you can. It's more about thinking about what purchases are right for you going forward and just making sure that when you do make a choice, you're not taking shortcuts and you're going, this is the thing for me. Let's buy it. Let's double down. Let's get the good stuff. And if perhaps you go, do you know what? I really can't justify getting it a really high quality tripod because I really don't use it that often, then make sure when you're going on set, you're hiring the thing that suits the needs that you have. I hope this video was helpful for at least someone out there because I know that this is information I would like to have heard probably like six years ago. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like all that sort of stuff. Join me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, before I do, go listen to Death Letter by Alexis on Fire.
Bye. Look, back and I'm better than ever. Whoa. I think I got a vendetta. Oh, now they call me, I seen her. Yeah. All of those times getting severed.